Hello everybody, this is Pastor Richie coming to you again with another midweek word. Um, but before we get into the word today, uh, I just wanted to inform all of our church family that we have decided to uh, continue to have our drive-in services on Sunday mornings uh, as long as the temperatures are going to allow us to because of all the stipulations and things that we're uh, facing. So we, we, felt, we feel like it's the best decision for us at this point in time, uh, as long as the weather will hold out. So, uh, But last week we spoke about uh, the judgment of believers, and this week we're going to talk about something that ties into that same uh, subject. Uh, we, we talked about the judgment of believers, uh, you know, ones that have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Uh, we spoke about how that this judgment will take place sometime during the uh, seven years of tribulation time that is going to be happening on the on the earth at that time, and we spoke about this judgment not being a, a judgment of our sins uh, because Jesus has already been judged for our sins, even though he was sinless. He took our penalty on the cross. We know uh, Scripture says the wages of sin is death, and Jesus took that for us. And so, uh, but this judgment on will be a judgment on the things that we've done uh, within our lives, uh, our bodies, uh, uh, the deeds that we have done uh, during our time as believers. Uh, it'd be a a judgment on how faithful that we have been in our Christian walk, uh, day in and day out. Um, it'd be, you know, what did we do? Um, what is it that we didn't do? Uh, what did we do with the, uh, when we did it as far as with our attitudes, uh, wrong attitude, uh, or right attitude? All of these things will be weighed and judged by the righteous judge, Jesus Christ. Uh, believers will have the first judgment we spoke about, and then unbelievers will have a judgment that will come later, uh, which will be the great white throne judgment. But Every human being that has ever lived will have to give an account for the things that they've done within their body. So whether believer or whether unbeliever, uh, every one of us are going to stand before the righteous judge at one point and, and give an account for the things that we've done. Uh, thank God again, uh, all of the things that we've done before Jesus, before accepting him, it's like we never existed in, in that part. But we will be judged for the things that we've done within our body as believers. Uh, Romans 14 and verse 11 and 12 says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us, notice, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. So there we have it. Uh, whether we're whether it's the quick or the dead or the unbeliever or the believer. Um, we need to understand, though, as believers, that we are in control of our own lives. Scripture says sin has no more dominion over us. And so we have, we have that um, charge over us now. Uh, the grade is up to us, so to speak, to make. Uh, we can either have a failing grade or we can have a passing grade. I pray that all of us will have more of a passing grade uh, than a failing grade. There's no doubt we're going to fail in uh, many ways, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, more on the passing side of things. Uh, we are the only one. You're the only one. I'm the only one. We are the only one responsible for um, you know what we do. Uh, scripture says that uh, the child is not going to be subject to his father's sins and such. And uh, so each one of us are responsible for the things that we did do or what we didn't do. So Jesus purchased our salvation. That's why we're able to stand at this judgment of believers, all right. Uh, but we're at this time we're in heaven and we will continue to be in heaven uh, with the Lord for at this point for all eternity. And like we said last week, we won't have to worry about uh, that. Our salvation is secure. But at this judgment as well, there will be a reward ceremony, uh, so to speak. Uh, again, um, it's kind of like a student that would have an end-of-the-year assembly, uh, for instance, that all of the work that they've done for that year uh, will be uh, recognized or looked at. Uh, it's kind of the same way with us. We're, we're going to have uh, this uh, gathering at this end time 
and uh, we are going to, uh, the Lord is going to look at, he's going to grade us, uh, basically. Um, you know, just like a student has been given the tools that they need, they've been given the books and, and the teaching and all of that, uh, we've been given all the tools that we need to uh, make the grade, so to speak, uh, that we need to make. And, and now, um, you know, we will, just as just like that student, will be rewarded for the things that was done well. You know, a student would be rewarded for a good conduct or, um, you know, making good grades. And so we'll be honored as well uh, for our faithfulness to the Lord. And again, as if he hasn't already given us enough of salvation, uh, we're going to be rewarded uh, for our faithfulness. But at this judgment, we will either get rewards or we will lose rewards. Uh, both things will be happening. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 11, I'm going to read these scriptures to you. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, or it's going to be made apparent to him. Uh, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive reward. Or if it, it stays, it's sustained. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself, notice, shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. In other words, you don't have to worry about losing your salvation. It's all done. Uh, but you will be graded and I will be graded uh, for the things that we've done uh, within our lives. And notice those scriptures there where it says um, the foundation that we build on, if we build on it gold, silver, precious stones, these things represent the things that we've done well. These things represent our faithfulness to the Lord. Uh, I heard one minister one time say, these are the things that you have to dig for. These are the things you have to get down into the earth and you know, and you really have to try. And uh, so uh, those represent the good and faithful things. Wood, hay, and stubble represent the things that we did as believers that were not good and that did not have a good representation uh, for the Lord. They were unfaithful, so to speak, or they were unfaithful. Uh, and Scripture here bears out that the fire of God will test each and everyone's works uh, of what kind it is or what sort it is. Uh, just just think about it. it. Wood, hay, and stubble, those are things that when fire is put to them, it's poof. It's, it, they're gone. Uh, but um, gold, silver, uh, precious stone, these things are used to the fire. These things are, matter of fact, uh, fire brings out the, the impurities out of these things, and they're more precious than ever before. And so uh, in a likeness, that's the way our... Um, uh, the, our works are going to be. Uh, they're going to be good works or they're going to be not good works and they're going to be revealed the, the, by fire. The test of fire is going to be put on them and whatever stays, that's what we have as reward. Now, let's literally peek in on this event as it uh, unfolds in the book of Revelation uh, here for a moment. But before we do, let's look at what Paul uh, says uh, about uh, what we receive would what we will receive for eternity. Uh, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, and he told Timothy right before he was about to die, a matter of fact, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Uh, he made, made mention earlier, it was like a, a race that he was running. Uh, and uh, we don't run for an incorruptible crown. We run for, I mean, a corruptible crown. We run for an incorruptible crown. Uh, but he says, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. And then he says, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Notice, a crown of righteousness is laid up for Paul, he said, uh, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. So notice that uh, statement as well, that righteous judge. There again, uh, scripture interprets scripture. So we're going to be standing before the righteous judge, uh, Paul is going to stand before the righteous judge just like you and I on that day and give an account for the things that we've done as believers. And, and he says that there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And he's no respecter of persons. 
every one of us uh, that uh, make it to heaven, every one of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, we have a crown uh, laid up for us. As long as we keep the faith, he said, I have kept the faith. And that's the main thing. Uh, but he says, um, of course, he went on to say, not to me only, but to all those who love his appearing, uh, will receive that crown of righteousness. Uh, Revelation 2 and verse number 10 uh, Jesus here speaking letters in red, if you if you wish to read along with me. Revelation 2.10, uh, the Smyrna church, or that's how I pronounce it anyway, uh, they're told by Jesus that uh, this, this line here says, Be faithful unto death, Jesus says, and I will give thee a crown of life. So there we have it again. Paul makes mention of it. Jesus makes mention of it. I will give you a crown. Matter of fact, there's many crowns that are mentioned, uh, but uh, I will give you a crown of life. Uh, let me ask you this question. What, what kind of things are in a crown? The Holy Spirit just bore that out to me one day. What kind of things are in a crown? Gold, silver, precious stones, right? Those are the things that would be uh, considered a part of a, a king's crown or part of a crown. So gold, silver, precious stones. In chapter number four of the book of Revelation, in which we spoke about before that the rapture of the church taking place right there at the first of the chapter, uh, Revelation chapter four uh, says that um, says something about uh, what's going on in heaven. And it's there again, the chronological thing, uh, we can see it happening. The church is caught up. And then in uh, chapter four, uh, just a few verses in, we see the uh, church or what uh, many theologians, and I believe as well, is the church standing before the Lord. Uh, Revelation 4, if you turn there with me, Revelation 4 and verse number 2, I'm going to skip around a bit, but it says, And immediately, this is John speaking, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Who else but Jesus Christ, the righteous judge? Uh, verse number four, it says, uh, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Uh, uh, upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they uh, had on their heads crowns of gold. So uh, all theologians believe that this, is, this represents the church. Now, there's many ways you can approach this. You can say, okay, 12 represents the um, the um, 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament. Uh, 12 represents the 12 apostles in the New Testament. Uh, but in essence, this represents the church. Uh, 24, notice the word elders. Elder is a term that we use in church uh, as someone that is um, sowed out to the Lord and serving the Lord for a length of time. But it says, they will be clothed in white. will also be clothed in white raiment. And it says, on their head is a, uh, a crown. We're going to be given a crown. So it all points to uh, the church, and the church being before uh, the throne of our Lord. Uh, verse number 10 says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and notice, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, notice, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. It makes mention of, uh, in John 2, that uh, everything was created by Jesus, and it was created for him. And uh, so uh, it says, Lord, you are worthy to receive glory and honor. And, uh, and, and, but these four and 20 elders or the 24 elders, which represent the church, are going to take their crowns off of their head. They're going to cast their crowns before the feet of Jesus. This is a very important thing. This is an interesting thing here. Uh, we are not worthy, church, of anything. We're not, we're not worthy of any glory, any honor uh, whatsoever. Jesus deserves the glory. Jesus deserves the honor. We will uh, just be happy to be in heaven. We'll just be happy that we made it in. 
and, and we don't res deserve a re reward. He does. Uh, he is the only one that rece uh, should receive reward. Jesus uh, is going to receive a reward for, from us. And um, our crowns represent everything. This is the neat thing here. Our crowns represent everything that we were faithful in as believers. The gold, the silver, the precious stones, that's what makes up a crown. Uh, these are the things that we were faithful in. Uh, in our life, in our uh, Christian walk. And, and we were only faithful because of the Lord's help. Uh, we can't even walk, as the song says, without him holding our hand. And, and so we were only faithful because of the, of the Lord giving us his Holy Spirit to help us day in and day out. So uh, we are all going to give our crowns to Jesus. We're going to cast our crowns at his feet. This is a picture of the church uh, this is what's going to happen. We're going to cast our crowns at his feet saying, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of glory and honor and power. And 99.9% uh, .9 of the things, for instance, too, that we do uh, affects people. It, it's, it's toward other humans in some way. And uh, Jesus said in Matthew 25 and verse 40, uh, and this just, uh, man, the spirit, I, I almost... Uh, I had a Holy Ghost run when I when he just brought this to my mind. I was visiting with somebody, matter of fact, one day, and, and this scripture just come out of my mouth, and the Holy Spirit revealed and tied all of this together for me. Uh, Matthew 25 and verse 40, Jesus uh, here, uh, he referred, he's referring to uh, ones that he spoke about. He said, uh, you know, I was in prison, and you visited me. I was sick, and you and you helped me, you know, I was hungry, and you fed me, and all of these things, talking about things that we do towards people, and uh, he says, and the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the one of the least of these my brethren, he says, if you've done it to the least of these saints, and he's addressing you as saints, uh, those that are believers, uh, if you've done it to the least of these, or what we would term as least of these, those that are in prison, those that are hungry, and they, you know he's naming off all of these, he says, ye have done it unto me. So anything that we do towards uh, you know, uh, people, which there again is 99.9% .9 of things that we do is going to affect people. Uh, you know, People are watching our lives or whatever, how faithful or unfaithful we are. And all of our faithfulness, all of our gold and silver and precious stones, uh, we're going to be rewarded uh, for those things. They're going to be placed in our crown. And then we're, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So we're literally, what we are, uh, as we're being faithful, we're literally going to give that back to the Lord. Uh, our rewards, we're going to say, Lord, we don't deserve this. Uh, here you go. And uh, we're going to cast our crowns at his feet. And it's just... It's just wonderful to think about how uh, the Word of God just all ties together and, and how that uh, we're going to one day uh, give Him back uh, our, out of our faithfulness. And so, church, I pray that you'll be faithful to the Lord. I pray that you will serve Him with all of your heart, that you'll uh, keep heaping up gold and silver and precious stones. Uh, so be careful how you treat other people. Uh, make sure that you are, are treating people like you would Jesus because that's literally what you're going to be doing. When you've done it to the least of these, he said, you've done it unto me. I pray that your reward is great so that you can give back to our Lord and our Savior one day. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I just do thank you for all of those that are watching. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their interests, Lord, in your things. And Father, I just ask that you would, uh, Lord, just cause each and every one of us to be more faithful to you than we've ever been, to be more careful, to know that, um, Lord, when somebody may uh, spout off to us or, uh, Lord, uh, or just any dealings with uh, humans on a positive or negative note, uh, Father, that we would uh, be careful how we handle people. And, uh, Lord, that we would know that when we've done it to the least of these, we, we're going to do it directly to you. So, Father, I just ask your anointing, uh, Lord, rest upon each one to be able to do what 
only they can do with your help. Father, if there be one that is not saved, that is watching, uh, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would save them. Uh, Lord, it doesn't take me. It doesn't take another minister. All it takes is that person crying out to you, Jesus, saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me and change me. Father, I just ask that you would just, uh, Lord, draw ones to you today. And, and Lord, if there's one that does repent and ask you to come into their heart and they believe that you are the Savior, Lord, may they tell somebody that they got saved. Father, we just ask it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I pray that you prayed that prayer with me, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, God bless each one of you. Uh, if we can be a help to any one of you, please let us know. God bless you.